take a fantastic tour through the galaxy with the Space Family Robinson and their courageous crew. My sensors indicate the presence of aliens. Join the Jupiter 2 in its quest for knowledge and adventure on Lost in Space. The pain, the pain of it all. Today at 9, 6 Pacific on the Sci-Fi Channel. The robot's voice and approach was almost was different much of the time. Emergency! Emergency! We did the lines, we had to stay in sync, and sometimes I would do it one way and sometimes you'd do it another way. Affirmative! Another problem that we had, there was no explicit instructions to anybody as to how to equalize the voice of the robot. So the robot's voice changed from show to show, sometimes because of me, sometimes because of the way it was mixed by the audio guys. My favorite has always been Junkyard in Space. I love the scene between the robot and Will Robinson when the robot is saying goodbye. You must leave now, my friend. Go. And, and do not look back. The touchiness of, of the scene, it was, it was really nice. The alliteratives that I use with the robot are a source still of great joy to me. You blithering bumpkin! You lugubrious laggard! You cowardly clump! You bumptious booby! You ungrateful underling! Blithering bumpkin! Silence, you cackling coward! Oh, how marvelous! I used to stay up all night dreaming them up. And I use them all. And it all worked because I get letters about it still. <laughs> segment that was particularly interesting it was called west of mars in which i played two characters dr smith and i played zeno the fastest gun in space and you surrender nice and peaceful and remember if you don't make him think you're zeno i'll have you covered and zap that was fun to do so i hear alas poor smitty i knew him well what do you got there, robot? One of the Dr. Smith heads from Lost in Space. Oh, yeah, that was used in The Space Destructors. That's the episode where there were dozens of duplicate Dr. Smiths. Even I was a Dr. Smith look-alike. There is no further need for you. You will be destroyed. No! Pretty scary, huh? Oh, the pain. The pain. <laughs> the cool guest stars we had on Lost in Space, Robot? I compute there was Michael Rennie from the day the Earth stood still, Al Lewis from the Munsters, even Colonel Klink from Hogan's Heroes. Yeah, you just never knew who was gonna show up. I am called Quano. Are we getting old, or is it just my imagination? Speak for yourself. I have not aged a single day. Oh, the pain. people out there want to know just how many versions of you we used during Lost in Space. That is classified information. Well, let's see. There was the full-size hero that we saw most of the time. Affirmative. And then there was the lightweight fiberglass shell that we used for stunt scenes. Affirmative. And then there were dozens of the little toy tiny robots that we used when we were invaded. Unfortunately, we all had to split one paycheck. Lost in space, I was able to share the screen with lots of sci-fi gadgets and other space hardware. There was the Jupiter 2, the chariot, the jetpack, the force field generator, and the laser weapons. Lucky for me, I got all the dialogue. One day when Everybody was excused for lunch. Bill Moomy and Mark Goddard locked me in the robot. So I lit up a cigar. Erwin Allen comes on the set, sees smoke coming out of the robot,
fire extinguisher comes running over to the robot and I said, no, no, Erwin, please, it's only me. I'm inside here. And he starts laughing. Became a good joke. You're on. I always had my guitar with me uh, on the set. And there was this campfire scene that we were filming. And Irwin came up to me and he said, why don't you play something on your guitar? So I picked Green Sleeves, which turned out to be, and I didn't even realize it, the theme song from Lassie. That's right. So I'm sitting there around this alien world campfire playing the theme song to Lassie while June Lockhart is sitting there looking at me like, why are you doing this? <laughs> One of our sets was right next to a Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea set. And there would be days when some poor stuntman in a wetsuit would go rampaging through the sea view on Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea. And the next day, the same would be back in the same suit, only they'd spray him green, and he'd come rampaging through, you know, some unknown alien world. The votes are in. Isn't that exciting? Yeah. Now see the 10 episodes you chose in the Lost in Space Marathon, plus the broadcast pilot and the rarely seen original pilot, exclusive interviews with the original cast, and a special sneak peek at the upcoming Lost in Space movie. Celebrate the 30th anniversary of the launch of the Jupiter 2 in the Sci-Fi Channel's Lost in Space Marathon begins next. Today, October 16th, 1997, the launch of the Jupiter 2 and the beginning of our Lost in Space Marathon. Now, the 1965 pilot, The Reluctant Stowaway. Devil. I'm Angela Cartwright from Lost in Space, and you're watching the Lost in Space Marathon, here on the Sci-Fi. This is the beginning. This is the day you are watching the unfolding of one of history's great adventures. What did I think the world was going to be like in 1997 when we were making the show? Pretty much like it is now. The Robinson family was selected from more than two million volunteers. After all, there are people living in space on a space station. Wow, if I could have projected the future back then, I would have played the stock market, I think. I never gave it a thought. I assumed that we would be colonizing the universe. Man's colonization of space beyond the stars. The 60s were very turbulent years, you know, the assassinations, the war in Vietnam. We had more to worry about what was happening on Earth than um, we could handle. So I think we we're all hoping that by 1997 we'd have lasting and uh, we'd live in harmony. Well, the silver suits, of course, were wonderful. The first season in the pilot, they were very hot and very, very constricting. But if you bent your arm, it actually stopped the circulation. We had to kind of lie there, just in between takes. We had to have ironing boards that we would, like Frankenstein, we would lean back in these ironing boards. They changed those in the second season. They made them out of, like, mylar or something and uh, became quite comfy. People of Earth, prepare to embark upon the most incredible journey ever undertaken by humanity. Lost in Space, the collector's edition. Soar into the unknown aboard the Jupiter 2 with your first two episode video only $4.95. Featuring the unaired pilot and the startling premiere episode in Adventures Beyond Imagination. Earth 97, boy genius Will Robinson and his family head for a new life in a far off galaxy. Unaware that a mysterious stowaway will leave them all hopelessly lost in space. This is never ending intergalactic adventure. Dr. Smith! Disaster at any moment. The suspense, the shock, the lure of the unknown. Your heart will race, your pulse will pound, your VCR will explode with excitement. Lost in space, it's out of this world. To get your first two episode video for only $4.95, have your credit card ready and call toll free 1-800-799-1515.